X fire, X split. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we're back, and let's hope it's legitimately back, and it's gonna stay back. So let's uh, let's line this up back to where we were, and let's get back to what we're gonna do. So we just decided we want to do sort of a steampunk fantasy, not really fantasy, more of a steampunk island adventure game where we're gonna have some cool crafting mechanics into it, which are gonna be very steampunk focused and very very puzzle heavy, which will be really good. And that's kind of where we're at now. So, all right. So now that we kind of decided this, what do you guys think we should start with? I think it'd be cool if you have like some kind of like watch or something, some form of, of of like some form of gizmo that that is attached to you in some way that you can continuously refer to throughout the game, that that allows you to. A what? Oh yeah, right. We could we could totally make like um. We could make like a like like little adventuring companions, right? You could you could maybe find maybe you get maybe you get shipwrecked on this beach and the first thing you see is like like this little like dog running up to you and he's like hey and he's yeah and, he's, oh, God, yeah. <laughs> and then like he comes up to you and like maybe he could be your little traveling companion maybe that's how maybe maybe that could be how we do like our hint system so you're like I have no idea where that where I want to go on this game and then we would recognize that after a while like okay this player's obviously lost he's been traveling in circles for the last like half hour or whatever. So maybe your dog would start like barking or something, and you look down at your dog, and you could see like, like a like a like a sniff track going somewhere to where it's like, okay, so the dog smells something over there. Let's let's start heading in that direction. You know, some way of kind of incorporating a, some some form of hint system, or we can make it very like futuristic or steampunk, and have it be like a little steam-powered mechanical dog. But I don't know how well it could smell at that point. But sure, it could smell great. <laughs> why, why not? Who cares? So. Did you, uh, so what do you think? Is that something you guys think would be fitting for this game? A little companion of some form? Oh, that'd be good. Different companions depending on like or maybe like the island maybe you're starting on. Maybe you get like a little mechanical parrot and fly around. And then, and then, oh, that'd be cool. And then maybe you could toggle into seeing through their view somehow. I think that'd be cool. Or maybe you just have a little mechanical robot that is integrated to your little Mega Gizmo watch, and then from this watch you can control your little mechanical companion. Maybe it can turn into a parrot, or turn into a dog, or turn into like these different types of animals that have these have that each have their sort of different different niche thing that they can do. And then you can control that through your watch, and then you can see kind of what they're seeing. I'm totally envisioning this right now on like the Wii U, right? How you have the tablet, or like a 3DS, so you have the multiple screens, and you can just look down at the other screen, and you can start controlling from down there. But that's that's way more advanced. <laughs> 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 no, I like that, right? You could. Maybe that's the M. Night Shyamalan. Well, you could be a robot that can swim in salt water. Why not? I mean, you could. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, right? Who knows? Yeah, rod and robots don't really mix, but you know it's steampunk and you can kind of do whatever you want. I mean, if it's steam powered, then it's only powered by water, so it kind of works, right? Maybe that's how you regain health, like the old Mario game. You just jump in water and sit there for a minute. Or maybe you know, you play the entire game and you think you're some guy, and at the very end you find out you're a robot the whole time. Boom! Twisted. <laughs> um, okay. Anyway, so I'm just gonna put for starting out. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna put just watch gizmo. And then from that watch gizmo, then we can decide if we want to be able to have our own companions, or if we want to have multiple companions, or if we want our character to do these things that the companions would be doing. And we can control all of that. Or steampunk watch gizmo, and that'll be like that'll be like a thing, right? It'll be like this big bulky watch. Then he can either control whatever is his little helper guy, or he can control himself and his, his own autom automaton abilities from his watch. And it'll all be kind of based off the watch, and that'll be your starting item. What else do you think? What else do you think would be good to start off with? What do you think like if I was to if I was to be an adventurer and I'm traveling somewhere? And I lose all my possessions. What would I have on me at that point in time? I would think like maybe like a knife, 
but maybe a knife that can't really be used for attacking or anything, but maybe used for, yeah, exactly, cutting. But then we could also just say that's just like inherent, that you can just cut rope, just because. What do you guys think? The goal of the game is to collect items, so you better be like, starting with barely anything. Well, that's the idea, is that we're going to have a few, very limited starting items, but many items that we need to gather. But I think that you still want to give the character some feel. Like, I'm thinking you wake up on the beach into the tutorial, and the tutorial's going to be like, use WSD to walk around, you know, look around using the mouse. Well, and then the starting start items, like, starting around you, and as you pick them up, they tell you what they do. Oh, you know, like the watch is on the ground next to you. Yeah. You walk over and you pick it up, and it's like you found your Gizmo Super Watch. Use this to do whatever it does. Okay, I like that. I mean, our starting items aren't necessarily on our person to begin with, but near enough our person to where you can collect them. Or if you start in, like, uh, if you started in an Aboriginal camp and they had, and you're in a, you're in a, you're in a cage, maybe they're like, oh, this golden thing, right? And they're they think it's so amazing, and you got to break out and steal it. And Get out of there. Do something like that. Cool. All right. Any other starting items? Anything else you guys think that we should know how to do? We should we should start off with. Maybe we could have a few items, maybe like one or two items to start with, and then maybe find a few items as we go. Um, that's just not necessarily like pulling us towards our goal, but it helps tell the story. Yeah, like, for sure. Can, I'll like, put that. Like, story, the story-based items, narrative items. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or maybe it's also that we're having different places you can start and should be. I agree. Like if you start out locked in a cage, and if you find something that you can use, it'll lock it. Okay. And then you have that for the rest of the game, but like you wouldn't have it if you started. I'm trying to start in the jungle versus a lock. Yeah. Alright, so starting is different depending on starting the zone. Thinking that. Like it's, it's very it's very fitting to what we're doing, but it's also like so much of a hassle to have to do that. Like I Yeah. Anything that that's something where like we have like really long days and you just have to eat like once a day. Like otherwise you have like you're slower or something like that. Like it's like Oh I can see that. Sure. But it's just yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. That way, if you find food, you're like, yeah, hell yeah, I found food, instead of being like, where the hell is the food? I can't freaking out, right? I like that. So you find it, and it's like, you get a buff, right? So it's like, you are, you can you can run extra fast now because you're fed something, right? Okay, I like that. So we'll put, I guess we've got our items needed, but it's not really needed, but we'll put food, food buff. Alright. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Alright. So let's say let's say we start on on the beach. And this let's just say this scenario, right? So let's just try and get it worked out a little bit. So we start on this beach, we find a couple components to make something to get us across the water. Once you get across the water, then what? I mean is it do you think that we'll have um, what do you guys think? What should be on the other end? You should always have some way of knowing that there's some goal in sight that it's like, I well, need to get there. The starting area is very, very small, and there's obviously not very many resources. Just you know, a few things to get you somewhere. We just make this giant island in the distance. It's kind of, it's, it's, I don't really think we're going to go to the world and we kind of stop this planet already. We should be moving towards something. I agree. What about, what about the people who are like, oh, I didn't even know I could build a boat or something, and they're like, they're just walking on this island, and they're like, there's something way out there, but I can't get there. It's covered with, it's covered with shark natives. It's a I agree. I agree. I agree with you wholeheartedly that people should be smarter than they are, and they should have a better inherent knowledge on what to do in a video game. But people aren't. People are really dumb sometimes, and you really have to hold their hands. But that could be. That could also just be something we work out through some form of hint system. Like if we had some kind of dog, you'd be like, you should go this way, rough, rough. <laughs> ask for the hint? Yeah, like ask the dog for a hint, you know. Instead of the dog is saying, hey, you should go to the end. Yeah, we can do that. We can also have uh, 
We also have NPCs that are maybe scattered on the island that aren't aren't good nor bad, but if you if you bring them some food, they'll be like, yeah, well, actually, I talked to this guy the other day and he found a golden watch, something. I don't know. Maybe something they like have that. like a easy mode and a normal mode, and then easy mode, and you can switch back and forth. Like if you go back to the menu in the middle of the game, you don't have to choose just once at the beginning, and then if you are having trouble, you can switch to easy mode. Yeah. Sure, that'd be good, and then you could have some form of a some form some form of a, a achievement progress. So I mean, like you be you got through this zone on easy, but you got through this zone on, on medium, like whatever, so something like that. Okay, I like that idea. We can put, um, this down here, and we'll just put like other stuff, I guess. We can put uh, variables that we will use. That's kind of what I was thinking. What if the main character like talks to himself and talking to himself, he's talking to the person playing? Yeah, definitely do something like that. Oh man, I wish that I could get to that big island somehow. If only I had a boat. <laughs> sure, something like that, right? You can totally do that. Um, okay, cool. I think that this is a good. It's a very good starting. Idea. I mean, this is this is kind of where I think we want to be at. We want to be really storyboarding and getting the ideas here off paper. Something that now we want to start building assets. We have something to sort of build towards. Any other input or questions or anything along those matters? Yes. Like a tutorial place, and you go to the big island. Like, how are you going to have different starting zones? Well, that's what we want to figure out. I was thinking maybe you would have maybe you would have um, the tutorial be its own. Well, it's own island altogether, and its own little like world sort of setting. Like you can kind of do it that way, or you could have a working tutorial in each starting zone, each and every, each and every one, depending on where you start. You start in the middle of, of a bunch of um, you start in the middle of a tribe locked in a cage, right? But we could work that into some way of a tutorial. You can have it be like training, like before he goes on his adventure. And he oh, that's a good idea. Train, like some building, and then they. If it's since it's not going to be like a network of multiplayer games, since it's going to be a purely solo playing adventure, I think that you could definitely do that. Because then I think that ideally we're going to want to have maybe like maybe like five or ten different like island st structure area places that we have the option of zoning into, and each of those will have its own dedicated start area, but it'll feel randomized because you're like, oh, when I when I started this game from scratch last time, this is one, this wasn't where I started, you know, because you're on a whole another map altogether. So we can do something like that. Now on each map, we could have its own. It has some form of tutorial integrated that way. So um, if we're going to be putting all this work into randomized, you know, multiple randomized starting zones, do we want this game to have like failure states, or we going to start over, or do we want it to just be kind of short? We sort of talked about this last um, Monday, I guess. But we said um, we don't. We was like you're going to necessarily die have to start over from the beginning but we're thinking that the where we would kind of make it the challenge would be in getting through these puzzles I mean the majority of the game is going to be based off of us getting past these puzzles that make it difficult and if you fail on a puzzle or you take too long on a puzzle maybe it just kicks you back to the beginning of where that puzzle was and you got to start back over from scratch but in terms of the open world adventuring throughout the whole area we won't it won't be like, oh man, I got swarmed by a hundred guys and they ate me, ate me to death and I died. But now, let's say you go into this alligator infested water and you swim across it and they chop you in pieces, it's just going to respawn you right before those alligators. I mean, that's its own little puzzle in itself, right? Yeah. Right. This uh, is an awful lot of work to get through the Okay, what if we did this? What if we did, um... So what if we had multiple of these little islands? 
spread out throughout this giant island. And each of these little islands were your individual starting zones. And then the goal of each of these little individual islands would be sort of a, a, a tutorial. And then that will bring you, that will teach you kind of sort of like how to move around, how to collect items, how to like the basic of crafting. And depending on where you start, that'll give you a different set of stuff to start with. Which is that way, that way we are rebuilding our main island over and over and over again. We're just. I mean, we could though. It's still, that's not, it wouldn't be that hard to actually build the island. I mean, the majority of this is going to be getting the systems in place. You know, we're going to need to be able to build some kind of crafting system and creating an inventory and building out flush mechanics and making it so it feels really good to move around this game. We need to build it make a grappling hook, and we're going to need all these things right? that are going to make this game feel really full and, and lush, but I don't think that the actual design of the levels, or if we wanted to go and we want to implement a whole other structure or a whole other island, and that wouldn't be... It seems like a lot, but it's just not. Once we actually get into the development process, it, you'll see how... Because we're going to be reusing a lot of these assets, right? A lot of these prefabs we've created. The majority of, of each wool will be built off of these prefabs. I mean, we will have to build different terrain for each in, in each individual island, but terrain's so easy to make in Unity. It's, they make it really nice. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah, you'll, you'll find the Unity terrain editor is insanely easy to work with. Okay, but uh, any other? Maybe, I was, maybe, but it would kind of be like you get there and there's just nothing really there for you. Maybe you can you can collect the old. No, even then, I don't think you'd want to do that because then it doesn't it wouldn't feel randomized anymore. Then you'd be like, oh, I've been to that island before, right? But well, you could, by all means, you can make it. You can give, you can even give them some incentive to go check out this island, right? Like. Oh, I spawned on this island over here, and I got glider pieces, and I, and I glided my way down to this island. But you know, I wanted to go back to here, or maybe, maybe depending on the on the zone that you start in, that's going to determine kind of how more or less the most the most plausible way for you to get off the island, right? I start with the glider. I'm starting over here on this island that gives me a glider, for example. I glide my way to the big island, and then from here I can find other pieces and some kind of machine and build my own plane and fly off. Versus like, start over here, you build a little boat, maybe you build a boat on the big island and get your way off. Something like that. Maybe start on this island and you can build some form of little like communications device. And that allows you to get picked up and brought across. And then you go to the big communication tower and fly your way home. Something like that. Some way to where, if I start here and I build a boat, I can get across. But I don't have any way to get over to this area because I don't have a glider. And I had to glide to it that way. You see what I'm saying? Maybe. Good. We could also make it. Or all the other islands could be in existence, but upon initialization, if you're starting on the boat island, then everything that's going to be on the glider island is going to be some child object of the glider island. And then we can just simply disable the glider island and this tech techie island and whatever else except for the boat island. That way, it is technically there, but there's no way the player can interact or see it in any way. It's just, it's, it's all the same thing. Yeah. So we do something like that. Um, all right. But any last, any last things before we uh, talk about our officer duties and whatnot? Cool. Excellent. Um, I'll just leave this up for now. I guess we can just slide this board over. So, also let me start by saying this. Are there any officers who don't want to remain being an officer? Everybody's good with what they're doing right now? Okay, perfect. Then, no one wants to be a public relations coordinator. 
right? OK, let's get rid of that altogether. And then instead, we'll have, um, we'll need to come up with a better name for it. I'll think of something better. But it'll be like the communications um, like liaison or something. That'll be someone who monitors the stream, makes sure that make sure that what I'm talking about and whatever I have going on here is and what's up here is also what people are seeing at home on the stream, at least to the majority of the degree. And they'll also be the ones who are monitoring the chat feed of the stream. So if anyone's like, hey, I was wondering how you did that, then because I can't see any of that stuff if I'm up here or if I'm giving some kind of tutorial. But then, then that person could be like, hey, someone had a question, and then you'll say the question out loud, and we'll go over it in more detail. Anyone want to do that? Either you two, or you three, I guess? OK. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right. OK. Great. Well, that's our five officers. Yeah. OK. Cool. We'll be, uh, then we can continue on with what we're doing, and I guess that'll be it for today. So I'm going to cut the stream now. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next week.